This is September Small Business Month streaming live. My name is Sean Krobler and thank you for joining our show. Today we're solving the problem regarding branding and marketing and we're joined by very special guest Christo Hall. Now Christo Hall is the director for Basic Bananas and they're all about making marketing simple for businesses, small businesses. Um, now they basically assist small business owners to attract a consistent flow of clients and grow the business and have fun in the process. Now, Christo is also the proud um, adopted father of a huge, I'm sure it's not any small anymore, Christo. It's probably a massive baby girl whale by now. Um, Christo, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Yes, and the whale she is, her name's Cosmos. She was a baby whale, and by now, who knows where she is actually. She's out there somewhere in the ocean, but she's a big baby, in, even in the first place. It was a very big baby. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it when yeah. I saw you guys showcasing that you'd uh, got the baby girl, and you're like, you, were, you sounded like the proudest parents in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we are the proudest parents, yeah. And thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and, a, and an honor. Thank you very much. No, thank you for joining us. I'm so looking forward to what you're having to share with us today and the small business community. Um, just quickly, can you tell us what exactly Basic Banana does in assisting small businesses? Yeah, so what we do, we're kind of like a, a marketing training and implementation organization. So we work with small businesses, generally kind of businesses in the maybe one solopreneur up to kind of five, ten staff and um, to the smaller end of the scale and basically assist them to build their their marketing system so that they can attract more clients and, and kind of do it in an easier way without having to have the pain and stress of finding clients, you know. And uh, yeah, so we we train. We have training where we train both online and we do face to face sessions where we implement and uh, basically teach and implement at the same time. So people walk away with you know their their marketing systems all set up. Yeah. That sounds like gold. I think uh, every small business needs a lot of uh, structure and systems in place. Now, I know you cover a wide range of marketing tools and facets for small businesses. But over the next uh, sort of 40 minutes, what we're really going to focus on is how to attract more clients online so you generate more leads online. Um, yeah. What are you going to be sharing with us today? Cool. So what I'm going to share, basically what I want to do is is kind of pull back the curtains on. I'm going to show you one of our strategies that we do, one that's a um, very powerful strategy which basically will walk you through or walk everybody through and your listeners um, through the steps to to start building a kind of automated system online which can, can run on autopilot for you to, to attract clients. So uh, I will show you and how to leverage the hell out of it so you can create uh, a strategy and and stretch it out to the maximum. So if you're going to invest, you know, five minutes of your time to, to do some sort of marketing, how to get the most out of that and kind of potentially reach thousands. So uh, that's my goal for today to, to share that with, with you guys. So I can, I can dive in whenever you, you let me know. Yeah, mate, please, by all means, uh, look, we, we uh, I, no one wants to hear my voice anyway, really, mate. So, so by all means. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the only comments on YouTube at the moment is Sean. Please stop talking. So, Christo, um, yeah, knock us away, mate. Uh, I know people are here to listen to you. <laughs> cool, mate. All right. Well, I'm going to switch my screen over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through a bit of a slideshow. I'll flick back and forth between myself and my uh, my slides, and I'll bring up a, a drawing up later on too, which I want to show you guys. So, I'll go for it. Thank you very much, Sean. Thanks, so, guys. Man. Cool. So uh, here we go. Now, uh, if if for any reason I disappear, you just maybe let me know, Sean. Or I guess it'd be hard to let me know. But anyway, <laughs> no, I'll let you know. <laughs> Perfect. Is that clear on the screen there now? You can see the. the yeah, it looks up. very very clear. The secrets to attracting clients online: no fluff, no oh. BS, no hype. Perfect. That's it. That is it. So what I'm going to run through first of all is um, I'm going to pull back this this kind of the, the strategy here. I want to show you, and I want to show you how to, as I mentioned, leverage the, the hell out of it. You know, any time or effort or money that you invest in your marketing. So I'm going to pull back the, the curtains on one specific strategy. Um, we do work with, as 
um, we kind of mentioned there briefly, with, with generally real businesses, like people that, that there might be people that have a physio, a chiro, a, um, a designers, um, a whole range of different businesses, and this, this strategy kind of applies to pretty much everyone, whether you're an accountant, a solicitor, whatever it is. Um, and so I'll go through a bit. First of all, there's a few things which we have to kind of verify to ensure that we're on the same page and so that people understand and get the, the, a deeper understanding of why they actually have to implement these strategies in the first place. So I will go through those. As we mentioned, my name's Christo. I, my, uh, we have basic bananas, obviously, that, as we've mentioned. Um, I am a surfer. I, I will apologise up front. I might say cool too much. Sometimes I get feedback that I've said awesome too many times. So <laughs> that's my uh, apologies in advance and we're going to have to deal with that. But um, I will move quite quickly as well and kind of do it in, in my own style and hopefully that's cool. There we go. I've said cool already. And um, if, you know, obviously at the end if we have a bit of time for questions, you know, please, you know, if anyone did have any questions or if Sean, of course, if you have any questions as well, please feel free. Um, but I'll, I will be moving quite quickly, so hopefully that's all cool. Now, um, basically what the, the goal is, as I mentioned, is to build an online marketing machine. So in terms of the online marketing space, there's so much that can be automated and kind of built once. So I, I know what that tends to happen is people spend a lot of time and a lot of effort online because there's so much you can do. It's like an ocean of endless possibilities, this whole online marketing space, and it can be crazily confusing. So. What I'll do, you know, what what we basically the what we'll, I guess if we look at today as if we're architects, so we, we're looking at the overview and we, we won't dive into too um, much specific of actually doing the hands-on brickwork in a bunch of you know because there's endless possibilities and endless strategies. So what we want to do is kind of become the architects where we create the the um the model for your some of your online marketing, and. Uh, the, the goal, I guess, is to, to get to a point with your marketing where it, it does just work for you. It's like an engine that, that runs for you. So if you're on holidays or you're um, working with clients or you're sick or whatever and you, you come back to work and it's not like starting again from square one because you've got the engine that's always running for you. So it's like a plane that, you know, that once it's up in the air, the, the pilots kind of monitor how things are going, but they're not always having to go through the the whole manual driving, it's kind of on autopilot and it works for them. So that's what we're going to do today. We're the, we're the pilots with the plane, create the, the plane that's on autopilot or be the architects and that we can build that system um, that's going to run for us and, and deliver results for us moving forward. So uh, so that's what we're, we're looking at. Now there's a couple of big mistakes which we see originally so I want to clarify these so that you can understand on a deeper level basically what, we want, what we're setting out to achieve here. The four biggest mistakes which we most commonly see uh, and this is the businesses that sell products both online and offline, so whether you're actually selling products directly online, it doesn't matter, or you're just marketing an offline product or an offline service, uh, but you're using the internet. So there, there are four common mistakes which we see across the board. What they are is, first of all, is no system. So what this means is basically you have to consciously make things happen and it takes your energy and occupies your brain space. Obviously you've got limited brain space uh, and so what, unfortunately without a system, so this is why I'm saying we want to build the engine which will, which will just continue to kind of run for us whether we're, you know, you can have a grumpy day or you can be, you know, don't want to talk to anyone today but you can still get results out of the day, you can still get inquiries um, but unfortunately what tends to happen with most businesses, most small businesses is they don't have a system. So they actually, you have to, as the business owner, the, the figurehead of the business, actually consciously think things through to make things happen. And um, it, it actually occupies your brain space, limited space. The other biggest mistake we see is a scattered and unorganized approach. So this is the most common we see in the whole marketing, whether it's um, marketing space, whether it's online or offline, where small business owners, they approach their marketing basically uh, in a way, it's like it's always chasing the next shiny thing or the next kind of cool thing. Um, what can generally happen is maybe let's say a business owner, just for an example, and I'm not kind of pointing the finger at any industries or anything, but just to, to get an understanding because I'm sure this would resonate with a lot of um, listeners and basically the way what tends to happen is the, the business owner or yourself, you might have, um, you know, you're here, okay, need to do online marketing and someone says, yep, you've got to jump on Facebook, you know, just as an example. And so, so there you go along, we hop on Facebook, start promoting posts, doing putting posts up and putting things on and a couple of months pass and thinking, well, I haven't actually, I haven't actually seen any cash in the bank as a result of this strategy yet and then someone else comes along and says, okay, well, that's because you need to do 
um, some online PR or something. Okay, so we go and give that a go and we fork out some money and some time and energy in, in that direction and we kind of forget about the social media or we don't tend to monitor whether actually any results were coming from it or not. And then we might do the same with the, the PR for a little while. Then someone will say, you need to optimize your website. You need to get some, some SEO, get your website ranking higher. We fork out some money in that direction for a while and don't really give it the, the time either to get enough traction or to gauge and measure and test the actual results that are coming out of any of these strategies and so on. It goes on and on and on. And this happens both in the online and offline space, to be honest. It'll be, it might go on to somebody saying, okay, look, you need advertising the paper or you need to do a letterbox drop or you need to do and they end up doing all these different things and not really knowing what's working, what's not, or if it's had a positive result or not. And this, unfortunately, we see this all the time. A lot of the time, I can tell you now, you obviously need to weigh up the costs of, of every different strategy we do, the cost, whether it's costing you time or it's costing you money, it's costing you something. Every every marketing strategy it's to be given is going to cost you something to put in place. So you need to weigh up how much it's costing you if it's worthwhile to continue, but most of them, if it's not taking too much time, but it takes a bit of energy and a bit of effort, people will unfortunately drop it. Like I'll give you one example is we have a, um, a podcast where we interview successful business owners, and that's one of, an, one of our online strategies. We have a lot, but where we interview these business owners, and I remember when we first started, I was kind of doing it, and I was like, ah, is this really going to convert? Like I was doing it myself. Is this going to convert into clients? Is it going to actually get any traction for us? And to be honest, I think it probably took more than six months doing a fortnightly show for over six months, even a year. And we, we made a rule. We said, well, we're going to do this for at least a year to actually build it up and build the credibility and build the name and so that people recognize it and come back. And and now we get a lot of a lot of great feedback from it. And people say, oh, look, they joined a program or, they, or uh, came along to a workshop of ours because they listen to a podcast. A podcast, if you're wondering what that is, it's a, an online um, audio. You put them on iTunes. It's like having an online, um, kind of like a radio show, but like recorded. Like a, a YouTube has videos. It's basically an audio version of that. And um, and people now all the time listen to these podcasts and they come along to a workshop and I don't know how they've found us or how where they've come from, but they've come through iTunes, they've found us, and they've say, oh, look, I heard a podcast and it was an amazing story and I kind of resonated with that business owner and then now here I am and so it's it's definitely working for us now but it, it might have taken really to be producing a positive return if you factored in the hours it might have taken six months to, to actually produce but now it, it definitely is work worth it's paid us back for all of that time now but it took a while to get it going so um you do need to persist as well now other than the third mistake we often see is the bottleneck where you um, you have a ceiling on your marketing because it always, for anything to happen, you are the implement. You have to implement. So you're not just the architect; you're also laying the bricks. You're making it happen. So basically, if you were going to do something like a podcast, or you're going to jump on Facebook, or um, do something, you you have to learn it, learn how to do it, and then you have to implement it as well. And obviously, you have limited hours in the day, and so unfortunately, this might be a little bit of a reality check, and uh, for some of the listeners, but you are the bottleneck where. You want to, if the system's built and it's running for you, you can kind of get out of the way. Whereas what unfortunately happens is everything has to come through you. Um, and if, if you're increasing what you're doing, it means you're increasing what you're doing and it can kind of lead to overwork or stress or burnout as a result. But it, unfortunately, you become a bit of a bottleneck. The fourth mistake we see is no online marketing strategy at all. <laughs> so... Um, and that can often be as a result of just not knowing what to do and how to do it or just, you know, avoiding it at all costs because it's because it's pain in the ass. So what's your reality, I guess? This is something for you um, because I want you to implement what I'm about to show you uh, and it's good to understand what is your reality for yourself. It's worth just jotting down any listeners and uh, it's worth grabbing a bit of paper and just jotting down what's your reality, what are those of those mistakes I mentioned. You might even think about what's the, the purpose of your marketing, your online marketing, and sometimes you might, have, you might have to consider who you learnt online marketing from because often it might be your teenage daughter and they're using Facebook for a completely different purpose as what you're using in this. Um, so we definitely want to uh, consider and, and realize the reality, is it working for you? Is it having a, a positive impact? And if it's not, what, what sort of results do you want to be getting out of as a result of your online marketing? What do you want to achieve? Because you need to know what you want to get out of it basically to know which, which online marketing you're going to apply because if you want to get a, a 100 clients a month versus 10 extra clients a month, you'd use different strategies. Or if you've got a global market or a local market, you're going to use different strategies. So. 
you need to consider where the reality is, how many you actually, like where you're currently at and where you want to be. And if you're not where you want to be, you need to obviously take a, a good look and a good consideration about why because we want to um, turn that up. We want to increase your results so that you get to where you go. And that's when we create the switch. So now we get to the good part where I'm going to show you what we do. We basically, when, once you get to a point, we call it the switch, which is a point in time where your marketing starts to work for you. So uh, instead of you doing all the marketing, as in most marketing cases, in most small and micro businesses, it's like you're working very hard to create the marketing. You, you might have to find that you might have to work and physically, and it's always like you're kind of almost like the slave to the business. Um, once we get to the point where the, the marketing switch happens, whether we get this, we call it the switch, is where the, 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 or the system starts to work for you. It's, it's like suddenly um, you've switched everything above all those kind of previous mistakes into an automated kind of scalable system. Um, and with an online system like this, basically it's like it, your business suddenly starts working for you rather than you always working for the business. And that's what we want to create for, for you and hopefully I can and give you an insight into and start to create today. Um, and this is kind of where once you've made the switch and the, the marketing starts working for you, starts delivering results, it, as I said before, it doesn't matter what you're doing or where you're doing, you could be holiday surfing, sleeping, like closed off, frustrating, you're not even, you know, people say think positive, you could be as negative as you like and you're still going to be getting results because the system's working for you. So it's not about just you and making it happen. You've created something that's external to you and it's going to continue to work for you. Uh, so yes, the, uh, the truth about it, basically the, the reality is, and I always like to share and be 100% honest and upfront, you do have to work to create the system. You're not just going to make a million dollars in your underpants overnight. Um, you know, as some might say in the online space, but you you do have to work to build the system. But if it's the kind of thing where I figure if you if you're building the system, if you're working anyway, you're working you you're currently working anyway. And if you do if you resonate with the scattered uh, unorganized kind of approach, which I mentioned before, you're already working, and it's a lot harder to do it that way rather than to have an organized kind of system where. It, if if you're gonna you're gonna have to implement some work, but if you're working on the effective thing that's gonna eventually work for you, it's gonna start to snowball eventually. So there is the implementation work where you've got to build it once, and then we kind of become uh, like the pilot who's monitoring the gauges. So you've got the thing off the ground, and then now you just keep an eye on it and monitor the monitor the, the gauges and monitor the results, and then we can scale things up and make adjustments in the right places. So here comes the plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my screen over to this fancy little drawing app. We'll just get it set up here, make sure it can come on. So you're just going to see the screen change around for a minute, and let's see how we go with this. <laughs> this is uh, my first time, just for those who are on uh, Google Hangouts, which is cool. So. Mate, you're doing a very good job with this. I'm, uh, I must say, I'm looking forward to the, the, the this how to. I, it such amazes me how much time people spend um, throwing haphazard things together when it comes to marketing. And it's it, 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 it's frustrating when you're doing stuff and you don't get the results. I guess I think that's the most frustrating part: doing things, and never getting the results. Yeah, yeah, totally. There's so obviously. It's it's hard, I, and, it, and it's totally understandable too. Because the, the thing is, people who are good at what they do. You know, you're good at being a, a, a good at being the business owner that you run, or being the accountant, or being the um, the travel agent, the builder, whatever it is. But without having the understanding of marketing, unfortunately, that's where the you know the we fall down. But uh, that's hopefully what we can do a little bit on today here, and and um, and. As long as it's done in the effective area, as long as, unfortunately there is a lot of garbage as well in the whole online space, you've got to kind of filter, work like a bit of a filter to make sure you're doing the most effective things. So uh, let's get into it. So you should be able to see uh, an iPad on the screen now, hopefully. Yep. Excellent. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you one strategy, which I'm going to show you just basically what I want, what I wanted to do here is I'm not, I'm not showing you the strategy, I'm showing you a strategy and I'm showing you how to leverage it. So 
I'm going to go through video, but I'm not, I'm not actually going to, because video, whether it applies to you or it doesn't apply to you, to you or to the listeners, um, I want to go through how what we do with the video is most important because this is where we become, as I mentioned like before, where we become the architect. So basically creating a video and how you can leverage it to, to the maximum. So just as an example, I'll go through, we, we create here at Basic Bananas, we do a fortnightly video where we do a fortnightly video tip. Now the videos now take us around about probably three minutes, five minutes probably maximum to make it, edit it, and it's done. So we create this little video tip. Now what we do with the video tip is, this is where it gets interesting. So it, it is quick for us now, but obviously for someone who's just starting out, there is going to be a little bit of time in the setup. But now that we've built the system, I'll show you all the ways in which we can take this little video and it can guide to thousands of people uh, in a really easy way. You know, and in a matter of, it, it seriously takes us about five minutes now to have the whole thing filmed, edited, done. Um, so basically the first place the video goes is it goes on to YouTube. I'll draw a little, uh, this is YouTube here. You have to excuse my uh, writing because I'm drawing with a stylus here, so this is where things get ugly because uh, the, uh, <laughs> these little stylus things are always super hard to, to draw with. So it goes on to YouTube. Now the video goes on to YouTube. What, what the purpose of what we get out of the video going on YouTube here is, and we, we're going to look at ways to do this. Obviously you want to look at ways to do this with all different marketing strategies. So I am just, as I said, just using video as an example because a lot of people online will understand it and you can get a practical understanding of how we can do, use this and leverage the, leverage the hell out of it. So the purpose of the video going on YouTube, as with things, as like these sessions today, go on YouTube. Videos go on YouTube so that it's up there, it's like free advertising, free airtime to the world. So the video is up, it's set and forget, you filmed it once, it sits on there. If people search for information, like let's say you created a video tip on uh, how to maintain a healthy posture at work if you're a chiropractor. And when people search for that information within Google, Google owns YouTube, Google's going to want to show your video in the search results. Uh, to it within its to Google to that person who's just looked for it and basically you get a free advertisement within the description of the video you'd want to add uh, go to www.entiawebsite.com so that it drives people over to your website so this here is your website so now that video is driving people to the website the next thing we do with the video, it's creating traffic and it's also giving you free airtime, free advertising. Next thing the video does is it goes on to social media, so it goes on Facebook. I'll just put a little FB there so we know that's Facebook. Shared across Facebook to get out in front of the viewers on Facebook. So it's shared on Facebook uh, to your viewers, you know, to your fans. It's in the news feed, as we know. It gives you some decent content. And basically, same thing again, you the purpose of Facebook that a lot of people get uh, come unstuck with a lot of Facebook, the main reasons we see with Facebook and 99% of the time, to generate business you actually have to send people off Facebook. So unfortunately what people do is they get into the whole rhythm of posting all these valuable tips and posting information and then think, well why isn't this converting into sales? Well most likely because people are staying on Facebook. If you've got something interesting or a new product or something you want to promote, you have to move them somewhere. So you've got to get those people away from the Facebook, get them onto somewhere uh, where you can make a sale of course with them. Now the next thing we do is we strip out the audio from the video and we put it on iTunes. Now iTunes once again is now like a free place to, to air. Your, your, um, you create a podcast and this is easy to do. You only have to submit it once with iTunes but the first time you, you create it and you set it up once and then you just post them onto your a blog page on your website and it will automatically feed. Now you're also listed on iTunes, so you're also listed on everyone that has an iPhone or an iPad with the new um, podcasting app. So you've got that out there as well, so you've got another reach. Within your recordings, of course, you direct people, once again, to your website. So now I'm, I'm still taking it further, of course, but this is now you start to, to, to see what sort of an impact we're getting from the, the five minutes we've, which we've invested in creating the video, with our videos, just so you know, just because I'm using this as an example today is video, is we just top and tail them. So we trim the start of the video, trim the end of the video, and we have an intro and an outro which are edited once, and we just kind of cap them on. So even a total novice like myself when it comes to video editing, I just top pop those on, and we use a program called Camtasia, which is really easy to edit video. It makes um, total novices look like professionals, and so we'll pop those on as well. Now, um, 
we're, so we're sending all this traffic to our to website. The next thing we do is we pop the the video on the blog page on the website. So it goes on to the blog. Now what this is going to help with is basically with your website's SEO, search engine optimization. So once again, if you've posted a video on if it was how to maintain a healthy posture, how to do you know, how to you know do five, ten top tax tips or something if you're an accountant or information on buying and selling a house if you're a conveyancer, um, sailing tips if you're a sailor, basically if you've posted some information that your market would be likely to search for, when people search for that information within Google, if you have a blog post, it's going to bring those people to your website. So Google's going to find that information and it's going to show it to them uh, in their search results. So basically it gives, in terms of search engine, uh, search engine optimization, it's going to give your website a little boost. And Google also likes regular content added to websites. So the more you add regular content, the more Google's going to re-index your website, which means it's going to find it more regularly and categorize your website more regularly. And uh, it's going to increase your, your visibility, basically, out there to the world. Now, the next thing that we'll do is below the blog, we add a Facebook comments app. So this thing little down here, Facebook comments. Excuse the handwriting. Once again, <laughs> it's interesting writing with this little stylus. Now, what a Facebook comments app is, basically, I'll show you. So I'll show you. Um, actually, I'll show you after so I don't have the screen share again. I'll show you in one second once I've finished with my little drawing up. But basically, what this is, a Facebook comments app on the website means that if people comment below the blog, so always in the in the videos we'll say, I suggest people please leave your comments below or share your thoughts when it comes to whatever your tip is that you've shared. And um, when people post below, it can share their post onto their Facebook wall. So it actually shares your blog post on their Facebook profile. So their friends then see that. Then if their friends come across, obviously, and they comment, then you get all these comments below your blog, which actually gets your blog post and your video exposure to all of those different people on Facebook. So suddenly your blog post is getting potential, um, potentially in front of thousands of different people, depending on the more that post, the more that obviously see it. So it's sharing that right across Facebook. The next thing we do is we take, uh, go to the email, go to your database, send an email, and now that email goes out, obviously, and drives people once again to your blog page. So it's directing people back to that, to that blog as well. So you've got interesting content and valuable content to send out to your your database to keep in touch with people. So suddenly now your, your one little video which we started um, with up the top here, let's say we started here with our video, it took us a few minutes, now we can get the most out of it. So, so a lot of these strategies, it's pretty much they're set and forget so then we can leave it and it's going to serve us moving forward and the more you do this the more it's going to start to snowball. So you start to get more and more results out of it. So basically YouTube uh, up here, that's a, a set and forget strategy. Facebook will move a little bit quicker because obviously uh, it's, as things change and new content gets added, yours will get pushed down. iTunes is set and forget, so it'll sit there forever. Your blog, it will sit there forever and will impact, um, have a positive effect, effect on your SEO as well. And, um, and you've got the valuable, product, of course, the content to go to your email. And the email obviously is timely, so that's going to move quite quickly. So what we do, I'll show you the Facebook uh, comments app first of all. I'll flick over to that just so people have a total understanding. Oh, there I am. <laughs> and uh, let's see if I can bring this up. This will test. This is testing my skills here, Sean. Uh, Mate, you're doing a great job here uh, maneuvering between Google Hangouts. <laughs> It might, um, it might even show both of us for a second here. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can bring up my screen. How do you, now, just a quick question. How do you move a YouTube clip into an iTunes, um, into an iTunes question. format? Yep, good question. So what we'll do is we basically... You, you can strip out the audio, so it's easy. If you're on a, a Mac, um, an easy way to do to do it is to, if you just basically open your video in QuickTime and then you go up to export, once you click export, it'll actually say save just as audio. So um, okay. Can you do that in Camtasia as well? Yeah, Camtasia, you can strip out the audio as well. Okay, yeah. great. Now, what are you seeing on your screen now? Are you seeing my... Uh, I'm seeing myself, actually. 
It's quite disturbing. <laughs> okay, we shouldn't be saying that. Let me. Uh... It it does go to your website and then it flicks back to me. Oh, okay, um, that's what I wanted. Yeah, here we go. So this is my website. Excellent. So yeah, I show basically if you once you create a video, any of the the videos, just go up to export when you're in QuickTime, and click on export. And the bottom menu, if you're on a Mac, the bottom menu will say um, audio only. And then you just click save, and it basically just does it. It's super simple. With Camtasia, you can do it as well. There's different versions with Camtasia. There's different versions, so depending on if you've got the latest version, it might be slightly different to my one. Because I know I have team members here where um, I have an older version, and depending on which computer I'm on, and they have some newer versions where it's a slightly different process. But you, you just pretty much see, say save audio only, you know, or strip out audio, and you'll you'll find it. Cool. Uh, cool. So. Uh, this is the our website basically. So I just wanted to. It's still looking at me, man. It's uh, oh, you it? click on your website. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Try again. Now there's me. Uh, <laughs> there's you. This could be. Oh, here we go. So you should be oh. able to see now. See our website. Now, basically, you can see that one? Cool. Yep. So this is basically, just to give, to give you an idea, this is the video on the blog. So we've created the video, we pasted it on the blog page here, so now it's serving us in terms of, of SEO and, um, and everything else which I mentioned. We now have, uh, basically, what we have is this app down the bottom here, this is the one I wanted to show you. So when people comment on here, it, it automatically ticks post to Facebook. If they uncheck it, it sure it won't post across to their Facebook. But if they don't, which is like most people, when these people post on the, the blog post, it shares to their Facebook wall. So then it gets exposure. We see some really cool ones where we, we sometimes have someone who will say, thank you for, for this, you know, great, like let's say, for example, if this Nica, Nicola here had have said, thank you for sharing this great tip, this is awesome. And then suddenly down below, it'll be one of their friends saying, hey, thank you, Nicola, for sharing this great tip because they think she's shared it on Facebook because it's automatically shared it. And then their friend's commenting saying, thank you, Nicola, as if she's shared it. And then they, it obviously gets exposure to their friends as well. So it's super cool. Um, and that's we can get a good reach out to a lot of people uh, that way. So definitely something people want to store. And that's just a Facebook plugin. If you're using a WordPress um, website, it's called Facebook Comments by Fat Panda, and if you're using a different platform, then um, you can basically just look look for a Facebook Comments app, and, and there's heaps of them. So uh, super cool. Now let's see if I can cool. switch back again. <laughs> cool. So back over to my slide. That's one more thing, which we'll do to then leverage it even further. Is can you see the slides now? Um, yep, yeah, slides are back in. Excellent. Yeah, cool. So now what we'll do is we'll take the, uh, the the areas which we want to optimize, and then I'll show you one more thing which can leverage it even even further. So basically, the things we want to optimize for the online marketing, the areas to optimize are the traffic, the uh, the landing pages, so the pages people arrive on once they arrive on your website. And it's always important to make sure that. Um, definitely for a lot of listeners, like let's say you were, you were sharing um, a promotion, a post on Facebook or a video that you were going to share about the latest model of sunglasses that you were selling. If you, when you send people to your website, you, you need to ensure that you always send them to the most relevant content. So they go straight to the most relevant page, which is the page about those specific pair of sunglasses. If they go to a home page and the home page has all these different products or something, People are going to get lost. It's like everybody has the most severe case of ADD when they're online. We don't. It's everybody's attention span is that of a, I don't know, less than a. I always say a fish, but a fish. I don't think, I even know. Don't they say a fish has six seconds of memory? It doesn't they? Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. The, uh, so even if it's less than that, and let's let's say attention span of a fish is you know half point five a second, we've we've got the worst attention spans online. So everything has to be really relevant. And um, so we, we make sure that we can optimize the landing page and we can optimize the conversion process. Basically, is, these are the three areas which we look at to increase results. So that once you've built the, the, the machine, then you're looking over it to increase results. So you, you can increase the traffic slightly and increase the volume by doing um, tweaking what you're doing with the videos or the different strategies or on Facebook or online. 
And then the pages which they arrive on, we can optimize. We do a lot of testing and measuring all the time where we're even testing the submit buttons and the headlines, the colors and images and what's, what's uh, converting better. So we have heaps of testing and measuring all the time to, to optimize these three areas. The conversion process is basically the checkout process and how we can optimize that. So I'll show you really quickly. Um, and just as an example, if you had a, and this would be a pretty averagely kind of performing website, not, you know, not, not amazingly well, but basically you wanted to keep it kind of um, small so it's doable for anyone on the call, of course. Let's say your website, if you're getting four inquiries from a website from 1,000 visitors per month, um, then your site would be converting at 0.4%. So you're just getting four inquiries from 1,000 visitors and this shouldn't be too hard for anybody on, online. Um, if you slightly increase the traffic, so just by being a little bit more active, you can increase the traffic by 10%. If you could double the conversions, it wouldn't be very hard if the conversions are only 0.4%. It's not going to be that hard. It'd be 8.8 inquiries. Now, what would be really cool is because you get so many websites get so much volume, you need to have some sort of a desirable opt-in or something that you can give away for free, some sort of information or a product or a voucher, um, some, some tips and tricks. Basically, where people can leave their name and email to, to get that information from you, so that you can communicate with them and build a relationship. And now, a pretty averagely performing, not amazingly well performing opt-in could achieve about five percent. If you're doing well, you might be getting you know around ten percent. Um, so you start to see the, the difference it can make here, where you could suddenly be communicating with you know an extra fifty-five interested people and. Um, we do, we've got some really good results with different clients of ours doing this and sometimes if it's something like a restaurant where they can give away a free drink or a free bottle of wine if you, you opt in once you come to the restaurant and the cool thing about that is the only place of course they can get that free bottle of wine is when they come to the restaurant. Um, you could be uh, specials and offers if your market's inclined to go for that way otherwise information is always great, it can be in the form of videos or audios or um, PDFs and, and resources and things. So you get the idea, you can be communicating with suddenly a, a heap more um, prospects rather than the original four and that might be just through creating an opt-in form with um, giving away some information then you test those things as well. Now I'll show you one more thing uh, and then we can, uh, and then I'm good to go. So the, this one is basically once uh, the people have, I just took a screenshot of this, so sorry about the, uh, the uh, guys here, Sean, I've got Marilyn Manson and a <laughs> few on there. <laughs> Well, that's good. There's nothing wrong with Marilyn Manson. Yeah, it's a good song. <laughs> so basically what I wanted to show you is I just went to any website. Um, is Google has space on websites where they advertise. So what's happened here is somebody has visited our website. So when I go back to that, that drawing that I had on my iPad, we've made the effort of making that, that you know, the five minute, three minute video, we spend the time, We've now leveraged and got it out there to potentially thousands of people and now what we want to do is people will come to the site, usually the conversions from a site, as a, I just sort of shared that with the opt-in is people that take up and decide to buy straight away that arrive on a website is very low compared to the volume of traffic that come. Now if people visit specific pages on our website, so they might have come for the blog or for the information and then they've had a look around, if they've had a look on our website at the marketing blast off workshop page what will happen is for the next month we have ads that will follow them around on the internet marketing that blast off workshop page so we know that they're interested in that product and because they've come to the page and what it does is google will track them and anywhere they go onto websites where which um, google is allowed has advertising space they will then market that workshop to them and it's effective marketing because we know that they've already looked at the page. So we get great conversions from this um, every single month coming along to these workshops because we know it's only marketing to the people that have actually come and had a look at the page in the first place so it's very effective. So we do have other methods going out but basically this is another way where we're still le leveraging that original energy that we spent to create that video. It's gone out to the YouTube and the podcast and Facebook. Um, been emailed to the database, it's gone on the blog for SEO purposes. If people have come along, they've visited the page, now this will continue to market to them after they've visited the page. So that one's called remarketing and very cool and powered by um, AdWords. So a very cool strategy to, to use as well. <laughs> it's super cool. 
So, uh, cool, look, it's almost, it's almost a bit sneaky, I've got to tell you. It's almost like you won't let them get away until they've bought from your business or, you know, committed to your business, which I think is absolutely fantastic because a lot yeah. of people spend a lot of money driving your site to people to a website. They leave your site and they're interested, but they forget about you. But you never let them forget about you. Exactly, exactly. So we just, and it's automated. It's, it, we've, with Connor, it's just happens. Like the only thing that triggers that, that advertising to follow them is advertising is the fact that they visited the page. So we've got the system set there once and it's, it's happening now for us. It's just automated. Yeah, so exactly. We're going to, we're going to stalk them. No, <laughs> it's not really stalking. <laughs> Look, you can't give away all your secrets now. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've, I didn't you've got mention some really no. great tips there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention no. the videos we get of people when they cut. No, I was just joking. <laughs> <laughs> now there, there is a there is a question on uh, Facebook, mate. Uh, someone just wrote on our uh, Sydney Business Month Facebook fan page asking, yep. um, "When is your workshop?" Oh, excellent! It's a good question. There's a couple coming up on Basic Bananas website, um, the Blast Off page. Has the dates? It's a good question. I should have known this off by heart, but um, I'll uh, have to check that myself. It's there's coming up in Brisbane. We have Brisbane and Sydney in October, so um, around about early October, and then we have Melbourne. The next one is in December. So we just came back from Melbourne. We had Melbourne and Sydney last week, which was which were really cool, sold out events, um, and so yeah, it'll be it's early October for uh, Brisbane and Sydney. And then December will be in Melbourne, which will be super cool. So uh, I did see it's a good one to come along to. And obviously, there's a special. You can see the price there right now. We've got a little special going on. It's 27 bucks. So yeah, uh, absolutely definitely good. worth it. And what yeah. do what do people learn in your workshops, mate? Yeah, basically, we go through a heap of different marketing uh, strategies in the time. So that one, that blast off workshop, it's a three and a half hour session. So it's just a half day. Um, and we go through the how to kind of create an, an image and a branding a brand that pops in the, in terms of the, the branding and the position and the product so that you are different in your market because unfortunately you know everybody has competition in their market so our whole thing is about getting giving you or creating um, you the business owner as the logical choice for your ideal clients so for your ideal market and we go through that we go through a heap of different um, strategies that people can implement straight away so it's kind of it's a really cool workshop where we you walk away with things to implement immediately which which people will see results and we get you know we get super cool feedback a lot of amazing results all the time I'll show you this little one just well a little bit of a self promo here why not um, yeah. this guy here hopefully you can see my screen uh, Richard he, he applied one of the strategies this is just a little a basic example he does our picture framing and within two weeks, pretty much, of doing the um, his first session with us, he, he sold an extra two grand, uh, two thousand dollars in in business, basically from a strategy which he he didn't have in place at all before and didn't know anything about. Um, so super cool, and you know, there's heaps of success stories like him, like him. But uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's we we go through stuff that's really tried and tested, and not there's kind of no textbook. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, do, you, but do, you run the, do you run the workshops at the beach as well? Yeah, we were very close to the beach. Our office <laughs> here on the north, <laughs> our office is on the northern beach. We actually got interviewed yesterday, just on a side note, for um, by um, News Limited, and um, they came and did a photo shoot because we do a weekly beach meeting with our team, and um, on a Friday, and and someone told the to, I don't know how it got to the news somehow, and they they want to interview us, so it should be in this Friday around the. Around the nation, and um, so pretty cool. But we do uh, run our sessions very close to the beach. We're we're in our head office is in Narrabeen on the northern beaches, and we're you know, we're about oh, a ten minute walk across around the lake, and you're at the beach. So very nice place to be. <laughs> you're just looking out for your big baby girl. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. We've got to stay close to to Cosmos, our big baby, our big baby whale. Make sure she's happy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, uh, mate. Christo, you've sh once again shared a lot of great quality content for businesses out there um, who are looking for a better way to connect with their their right audience, and not only connect with them, but make sure that they turn that connection into a quality lead and a potential prospect client as well. 
Thanks, mate, so much for being part of September Small Business Month. It's been great having you involved again. Thank you. A, a pleasure to be here and thanks for having me. It's been always fun to hang out and uh, share some insights and, yeah, I hope to catch you guys soon. Absolutely, mate. And if anyone wants to know more about you, they just have to hop onto the website or what's the prospect? Yeah, what's the, what's the best go? place to go would be to basicbananas.com. Uh, just check out basicbananas.com. If you're interested in, or you know, if you're in Sydney, uh, Brisbane, or Melbourne, interested in a blast off workshop, there's a banner front and center on just on the home page there. You can check that one out. That's a good, um, a, an easy way for people to get to know us and get a heap of value, and and you know see if you can apply some of these strategies to your business. So yeah, definitely, I'd right. love to hear from you. Christo, thank you so much uh, for being part of it. We really enjoy what you have to share. You've you've always been a a great giver to the small business community. So thank you so much for again for being part of the show um, and giving us that great information. Oh, please connect with the guys from Basic Bananas. They've got a great Facebook page as well. Um, or hop onto their website and all the information will be there. Uh, that's another end to our show, uh, solving business problems. And today we're really talking about marketing, branding, and how to drive clients or drive leads and clients from your marketing initiatives and I think Christo really gave you a easy step-by-step -step procedure to follow that kind of um, went a full circle there Christo, it almost from start to end uh, there's no way you're getting away and uh, a very clever, mm -hmm. clever procedure especially if you uh, don't have millions of dollars to spend. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, see you all later. Thank you for being involved, Christo. It's great to have Thanks, you mate. involved. And, uh, we'll see you guys later. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. Thanks, Christo. Cool, bro. <laughs> <laughs>